Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series from me in Dune Spice Wars. Now, this game just came out today, but I've had access to it for a little over a week now, so I'm pretty familiar with the game. Now, I was actually originally sponsored to do a video over on my main channel, that's why I had it early, but this video and this series is not sponsored. I'm just doing this for fun, I really enjoyed the game, I thought it'd be a great fit for the channel, it's gonna be a sort of mini-series, but if it does well and people want more, we can switch maybe other factions, we can maybe increase the difficulty, shake things up a little bit, and go from there. So, just to get into things as quick as possible, today we're gonna be playing as House Atreides! The stellar reputation of House Atreides owes a lot to its leader's commanding style, firm, yet honorable and fair. By Imperial decree, the Atreides just inherited the stewardship of Arrakis and have a lot of work to do to take over from the Harkonnens. Now, just a little bit of background, I've played a lot of House Harkonnen and a lot of the Fremen, but not so much of House Atreides and barely anything to do with the smugglers. So it's going to be pretty good, right? I know the mechanics of the game, but I'm going a little bit out of my depth with this one. Uh, so it should be quite fun to be on the edge of just learning new things and, you know, see how we see how we do. Anyway, so our unique faction bonuses are going to be that we have the Peaceful Annexation ability. We can take villages just by spending resources rather than having to actually attack them. Other factions lose no authority from treaties with us. We benefit from having a high Landsrad standing. And I think we actually start with a higher Landsrad standing. And we cannot pillage neutral villages. That's actually a pretty big one that we can't do. Normally you can actually just attack a village, gain a bunch of money, but that's not going to be an option for us. We'll talk about the other stuff once we get into the game and as we go a bit further. We also then have four optional counselors to pick. We can pick two of them. We have Lady Jessica, Duncan Idaho, Thufir Hawat, and Gurney Halleck. I'm going to be choosing Duncan Idaho, giving us all relation gains with sieges are increased by 100%, and then a negative 10% authority cost to annexing villages. And then we have Thufir Hawat. Our agents are going to have an additional trait. Now, normally, agents will have one trait, so we're going to have two. Your villages gain 20% resource production for two days when their region is targeted by one or more operations. So it's sort of like a if we get hit by espionage, we actually get a little bit of a resource production gain. Now, in terms of the settings of the game itself, we're just going to all pretty much all normal. Like I said, if people want a bit more in the future or they enjoy this series, maybe we could switch to House Arconin or something a bit more challenging and then increase the difficulty, increase sandworm activity, storms and all of this and really challenge ourselves. But we're just going with a default playthrough. The game did just come out today. This is actually wasn't even there when I was playing uh, last week, all these uh, different options. So we're just going to go vanilla. This game is in early access and just hopefully, you know, not have any issues with that and any bal anything crazy balance, uh, unbalanced. All right, so Duncan Idaho, Thufir Hawat, let's begin. Alrighty, we are in. So here we have Arakeen, an ancient city, one of the largest and most beautiful on Arrakis. Arakeen is largely built on bedrock, which is sure to keep it safe from sandworms. The palace is now the home of Duke Leto and the headquarters of the Atreides, but used to be inhabited by the Emperor's right-hand man, Count Hazimir Fenring. Now, just really quickly, I just want to mention that the UI has been scaled up in the options. So there's actually not an option in the game to do it. I went into the options files in the game files and just scaled it up manually by one. Seems to work pretty well. Everything seems to be fine. Although the one screen that seems a little bit clipped is the development screen, the sort of technology screen. So I'll talk about that in future when you see it. But just in case you're wondering why my UI looks so big, I did it to enhance the viewer experience for you guys. A lot of, you know, figures, stats, and things like that you might want to keep an eye on. So I think increasing the UI kind of makes sense for that. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, you can go to the game files, find the options.ini, and just make the adjustment in there. All right, so this game is a real-time 4X game. So it actually all, you know, there's no turns, it's just constantly moving. I have it paused right now, you can see the time up here. I'm just going to really quickly go through some of the resources on screen so you know a baseline level of what's going on, and then you can kind of follow along as I'm doing different things. So up the top, we have our basic currency, Solari. Then we have Plaskrete, which is our sort of building currency. We have Manpower, which allows us to recruit units and also pay for their upkeep. We have Fuel, which allows us to pay for the upkeep of ornithopters and harvesters that go out and gather spice. We have water and authority. Both of these are sort of like limiting factors in terms of expansion. If you want to set up new towns, you need to be able to supply them with water. If you don't have the water, you're not allowed to do it. Same with authority. And then we have our Landsrat standing. That's sort of how the council views us. The higher this goes, the more benefits we kind of gain, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. We also have hegemony. This is our sort of score that's going to keep track of how everyone else is doing. There's four factions. We have Harkonnen, Smugglers, 
and Fremen to compete with, and we're always competing. Uh, and, you know, they're going to have different hedge money. First one to reach 25,000 actually wins the game, although there are other ways to win as well. So we're always going to be keeping an eye on that. Um, and what else do I need to really... Uh, yeah, not, not much else. This is going to be our kind of uh, espionage when we get operations. We have our tech screen, our lands Red council, and then we have espionage, the main screen itself. And then all of our units will always be displayed here. So our harvesters, ornithopters, and any military units are going to be fulfilled there. And then on the top left, very last thing to talk about is our spice production and how much is in our stockpile, right? So here's our stockpile, and here's what we're trading with Chome Company. So we can adjust this. 100% is going to go to the Chome Company, which means we'll get, for every one spice, we'll get two gold. Or we can say none of it's going to go there, and that way we're just going to stockpile it. And the reason we have to do that is because we are paying the Imperial tax in spice every 25 days. So every 25 days that goes by... This we get taxed, and we get taxed in spice, and it gets more and more expensive all the time, so we have to constantly expand out and find it, uh, and make sure we're paying for that, and that way we'll keep a higher standing, and we'll gain more hegemony, and all of that stuff sort of goes from there. Alright, so hopefully you're all caught up. I'm just going to keep that at full stockpile. We don't need the money necessarily early on. At Arakeen itself, we actually can't even build in here until we reach 2,000, so we actually have no building options right away. So the first thing we're going to do is get another Ornithopter. I'm sorry, I kind of clicked that too early, but that was 400 gold and a bunch of fuel. And then we're going to get two units, a trooper and a ranger. And that way we've got them in production. So with our first ornithopter here, this is really just a scouting unit. They can't go into combat. They just kind of scout out terrain. We're going to go straight over to the spice. So we're always, get, you know, shown where the first one is just to kind of guide our first initial expansion. And once we get that up and running, then it's a free for all of where we want to go, how we find more, if we want to trade, etc, etc. Let's begin. Okay. Let's go. Off we go. And for those interested, you can actually hide the UI with F2. And you can hide it even more by pressing it again. Our Game looks quite nice. So towns are always going to be placed on bedrock. So this on is most move. likely a town. There's the production for spice. And then the game is obviously based on sectors, right? So we have, I've just clicked it, and you can see a sort of a white line going all around the sector. Now, another interesting thing we have is down here. This is Lowlands, Wind Strength 4. So this might be a good candidate for setting up water production, as the water production building scales with the strength of the wind. Ready. All right, we have our two units. We're going to go forward and begin our attack on this village once it gets uncovered. Now, we can peacefully annex, right? This is our unique feature, peaceful annexation. It'll take 15 days, though, to peacefully annex this place, and we'll be spending that blue currency that says 50 there. That's um, influence. So influence is earned as part of the council. We can use that to modify our votes. So it does come at a cost. We don't necessarily need to spend that. We can just attack it like anything else, and yes, no sir. one's really going to care other than okay. the, that village itself. Ah, now, interestingly, this town is actually so close to our home base that we're actually able to fire on them from the town. So that's good. <laughs> All right, so I want to. So as I'm expanding here, the thing I'm going to be looking for is what's the deposit. We know that every sector is going to have a town. That's no surprise. The surprise might be how much of a garrison it has. So this number two means that there is two garrison here. Uh, most are going to have two. Some will have up to four, and they can be a bit more tricky to take. But really, what I'm looking for early on is going to be getting all of our resources just pump, pumping those numbers up. You know, we need more plascrete. We need fuel. We need regions with high wind strength and that kind of thing. So. To inform where we're going to expand next, we should just get studying what okay. the additional resource is going to be in a region, rather than wasting our time looking at the fact that there even is a village there, because we know that. Alright, the town is almost... almost taken. I've noticed in this game the music goes off periodically. Maybe I'll add it in in editing or something, but um... It can be a little bit awkward sometimes. <laughs> All right, so we've been able to take control of our first thing. Uh, so our first village. These are called villages in regions. So it's going to be 27 authority and 5 water. So we'll just take control of that. It's going to take a little bit of time, not that long. And for those who are interested, in order to heal, you actually have to be next to a town that you own and be on the bedrock. And that's the same with supply. So these units have power, you know, the damage that they inflict, their health, their armor, and then supply. Now supply is really important. If I was to run out into the desert out of our own territory, we will slowly lose supply and then um, like really quickly die after that. Um, so the units will completely perish. So it can be quite tricky when you're trying to venture far, especially since there are pieces of terrain that you can't occupy that are just desert. You might have to go across them and that can be kind of difficult. So if you want to heal, you essentially, and you want to resupply, you have to be on bedrock and be next to something you own. 
Ah, so this is interesting. We actually found rare elements. The area contains rare elements, allows for the construction of the processing plant. Now, I can't actually open developments right now until we get our first village captured, but processing plant is about the third technology in the economic chain. Um, so there's no real point in going for this place that early, so we'll just move off this area for now. Keep searching. We've also got our other ornithopters, so we'll start spreading out now a bit faster. We've gotten our town, so this first town is occupied, Mimnun. We have these building slots down here. We're going to straight away build a refinery. Allows deployment of a harvester to the nearest spice field. Upkeep for gold and 14 plascrete. So you can build on the bedrock. It doesn't really matter where you build. I'm kind of, I don't really know why they've allowed you to even do this. It'd be fine if it just organically built itself. Um, but you can, I guess for defenses it makes sense. But these economic buildings, it really doesn't matter. But they can be targeted by raids, I suppose. So maybe in multiplayer in the future, that might be a bit more strategic. Um, so we're just going to build it there, and then a harvester will automatically make its way out to the spice field. Ready. Okay, sir. On the move. All clear. Waiting no, re for no resources in this area at all, but there is four wind strength, so it's just a regular terrain, regular territory, with decent actually amount of wind, so we could get water there maybe a bit better. All clear. Can't go this way. Oh, we're on the edge of the map. So this is actually the edge of the map completely. So this is... Uh, you can notice that this, the kind of fog of war is darker than here, so we actually can't actually go that way. So we're backs against the wall, actually, here. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Let's, I suppose, send this ornithopter somewhere up here. Now, we'll also find kind of different things. Oh, we just got our development. So here we go. So this is one of the screens where the UI is sort of messed up because I've changed the UI in the in the kind of settings file. But all, all the other screens seem screens seem totally fine. Uh, but what I'm going to start with is considering we've hmm, I'm actually going to start with going down the sort of statecraft chain. So this is statecraft, uh, military, economic, and then I guess Ar Arrakis itself and water and the locals and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go with intelligence network. Agents assigned on Chome Infiltration produce more, double the Solari and produce double the influence and it unlocks the data center building. So I don't actually need this that much right now, but I'll, what I do want to play um, to the strength of in this playthrough is agents and espionage. So we have spying logistics is the next one we can get, and that's going to give us double agent recruitment speed or 100 plus 100%. And if you get this one, it's another 100%. So the way you recruit agents in the game is it's just based on time. So speeding that up early on, especially, I think can have... Well, I don't know, but I'm assuming it's going to have a dramatic effect, and I hope so, so that's the plan. Alright, so we have that. So we can bring these two units together and decide where to go next. Down here might be good, depending on what that is. So that is energy sources. That, in, you know, plus 50% to fuel cell factories. Pretty good wind strength all the way around here, actually. Pretty happy about that. Um, so yeah, let's send both of our units down that way. We can actually recruit another one as well, so I'm just going to recruit another trooper. Right, let's turn these guys on auto recon now, and they'll just start scouting out immediately around us, because we know where we're going to go next. We're going to go down here. Now, it looks like... I'm not sure how we're going to get down here. don't know if they have to run this way and run down. Maybe. Received. Yes, sir. Just wait till that's done and see if there's an option to go around that way. Sir, on vector. I would assume service, so. Sir. So this area here is just deep desert. Super high wind strength, but we actually can't occupy it and build anything anyway, so it's kind of useless to us. We'll just expand down this way and see what's going on there. Yeah, there we go. We've got a nicer way around. Oh, really? We can't go there? Oh, man, really? Let's just see if I can do it manually. I don't think so. They'd pathfind that way. God, that's crazy. So we have to go all the way around to get there. This area is for wind strength as well. God, we really looked out. In a previous campaign I played, it was like t twos all around us. Kind of sucked. Anyway, our harvester is about to get set up. Our um, refinery. We have our third unit now. Haven't found any downed ships or anything yet either. Looking good though. We basically, we are 17 days away from our first taxing. All right, so there's just two garrison here, nothing else else going on with that area in particular. We have our um, harvester set up, so we can just click deploy. That's going to get picked up then, and then it's going to move it out there. It'll start scraping up the spice. We'll start storing it, and we can hit our first deadline. Yes. 
All right, so here we go. Let's go. At your service, sir. Now we can get attacked by sieges and rebels and things, so it's good to not spread ourselves too thin. Although I feel like my expansion here has been a little slow early on. Now what I'm going to be paying attention to is obviously we're worried about sandworms, right? Now we can do something where if we turn on auto recall, as soon as a sandworm appears, this will just get collected and be totally safe. It's a guaranteed way to keep it safe. However, doing that sacrifices 5% of the spice you grab, which well, I guess isn't that much. Um, what happens if it does get grabbed is we're basically on a timed cooldown before we build another harvester, but it is free. However, eventually we'll start crewing these with by spending manpower and if you lose that then you'll have to spend it to get it back get them back you know you lose the crew permanently uh, but if we have a sandworm warning we should see the warning here we should see it up here so it should be able to stay on top of it we'll see knowing me i'll definitely not stay on top of it but i'll do my best sir roger that okay. all right let's go and figure out what's going okay. on with this town Maybe go expand there next. We can also start queuing up just an auto-colonization of some of these places. We could do that right now. And that would just get grabbed eventually. I might as well do that, right? 48. Although, how long? How much is this one going to cost? 36. We won't have enough to grab it then. I'll have to wait just a little while. Okay, so let's just grab this first. When we get up to something like 48, we can grab this one maybe more automatically or passively in the background. Uh, so let's pull these guys back up here. How's their supply situation? Their supply goes back up because they're on the bedrock, so that's totally fine. We have the music playing now, feels good. So let's go back into the tech screen. We're gonna queue up a few of these. So we want supply, uh, spying logistics. I wanna get composite materials and then structured warehouses next. So that's our tech taken care of for a while. That's our tech rate, our knowledge, plus four. And we can build buildings to improve that. I'm gonna start scraping or, I don't know why I always say scrape, but start grabbing water as well from the wind. So we have wind strength four. Put down one of these buildings that's going to be plus three water for every level of wind in the region so it's going to be 12 and our upkeep is quite minimal it's not too bad we've stockpiled 50 spice so far no problems there and our new village is controlled Tsim ma so you need anything unique about this area yes of course we read it before the energy sources so if we want to get more fuel if we want to get a second more ornithopters or a second harvester we need more fuel uh, don't know if it's a massive priority to get it going right now. You can't spend fuel. It doesn't store. It's more of like a It's more like water where it's either you're you're using it or you're not you're not storing uh, storing it up as a resource So I don't think we actually really need it until I know that I want to get another spice deposit or another ornithopter So I think we're okay for a little while before we get that built so that means we could build something else plastic production something like that Yes, sir. Our other units up here now. We're ready to go for a run more so that's going to be 42. This one would be 54. Wind strength 4. Wind strength 4. These two regions are effectively identical. They don't have any unique resources in them. And they have the same wind strength and the same garrison. This one just costs less to grab. I wonder why that is. Does it say? Negative 5 for being an explorer. Negative 6. 54. 42. Distance from main base, I guess. Alright, so unassigned agent. We have our first agent. So here's the espionage screen. We get agents every five minutes, although we're grabbing technologies that hopefully make that go even faster. Uh, we're going to assign Amira here. She's intendant. This agent produces 20% more of every resource but infiltration. And she's also a merchant. Solari global production is increased by 1% per infiltration level. So we're going to slam her down on Arrakis. So we could put her into these different disciplines, or we could try to learn a bit more about our enemies. Or we could counterintelligence, put her on counterintelligence, preventing them knowing more about us um, but what I'm gonna start with is we're gonna be limited for our expansion early on and our expansion is kind of determined by water and authority so I want more authority authority production is gonna be plus one for each agent assigned to the Arrakis discipline as it were and we're also gonna get plus one Intel then over time we're gonna fill up this bar and for every infiltration level we'll gain 1% Solari of our total income. So if we're making 100, we'll gain one. It's a very small amount, I guess. Uh, but I suppose later on, it can have a big impact. And she also produces 20% more of everything. So we'll get, instead of just one authority, we'll get 1.2. You can actually display decimal places in the UI if you want. I have that turned off right now. It's turned off by default, so I just left it off. All right, let's go to Runmore. 
Now, if you don't have the amount of authority required to actually take a town, you can just still sit there on it and just sit and wait until you do, and then click to, you know... Oh, look, they've actually got two um, missile units. They should be easy to take out with their infantry. I love when you zoom in, you can also see the, uh, the two moons, the night sky. Very cool. And as I said, F2 hides that UI. It can be quite a pretty game at times. Alright, looking good. No sandworm activity yet. And what's our hegemony? So who's winning hegemony? Oh, we are. House of Trades. Nice. Our land strat standing is providing a decent amount. Our controlled regions and our defeated enemy units. Hmm, strange. The smugglers in Harkonnen haven't gained any yet, it doesn't seem. Alright, we've actually got enough authority to even take that place now. We might start going for anomalies. So out here, there is a crashed ornithopter. Send a military unit to investigate. Unfortunately, it is super far out in deep desert. That would be a nightmare to get to. Uh, what about here? We have a, a unique landmark. The Observatory Mountain. 100% Plascrete factory resource production and 500 hegemony. Whoever owns it, we need three infantry to take the town. We could take that town. It wouldn't be too difficult. Might be... Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard to get to. It's pretty far out there, though. Yes, sir. All right, Roger let's check that. the resources here. What do we got? Ongoing siege, occupado. That's going to spend more of our water. We've got enough water to take this one as well. Don't think I need to do peaceful annexation. Want to save up my influence anyway for the first Landsrad Council, which is in four days. We'll see what the different votes are going to be. Uh, I'm going to send this damaged unit back. Population is good, manpower is good, everything's fine. We're losing a little bit of Solari. That's not a big deal, though. Right now, I'm just stockpiling spice. We could start gaining money back, but I don't... I guess maybe a little bit until we just get positive. There we go. Because um, the exchange rate could get better later, right? We have one spice for two gold. So it can be imperative to just wait, hold on to it till the, the rate of the market is a little bit better. And that, I think that changes every time the tax goes through, and that's your set rate for the next 25 days. Uh, right, so we got Runmer. We have a strong network here as a sort of a modifier to the region. The village has many travelers coming by, bringing interesting gossip. Now, I'd like to get Plascrete up and running, another Plascrete factory. The upkeep of this factory is actually six Plascrete. I always thought that was weird. It produces six, or it produces 30, but it costs itself six, so we get 24. There are buildings that reduces the upkeep, though, so I guess that's sort of a limiting factor. So let's just pop it down. Doesn't really matter where it goes. And then we should be able to start expanding. So Plascrete is actually used to expand building slots and stuff. Uh, so it can be quite a important resource. And you can, have, you can find yourself hitting a bottleneck at a certain point eventually. It's going to speed up time just a little bit now. We're doing fairly well. Would like to get these ornithopters though. Unfortunately, it's just across deep desert. So if you just send a military unit to it, you'd get an ornithopter to use temporarily for a, about a month. And uh, then they'll kind of run out of fuel and, and kind of crash. Um, but it can be really good in early game, you know, to just have faster expansion. But it's, look at the draw. They just happen to be out really far. Like, we can't send units here without them dying. But we've got another option. We could retrieve the flight records and gain intel. And we can do that by the fact that we actually happen to have agents assigned to Arrakis. Having them assigned to Arrakis means you can use those agents to just passively get these different things without having to actually go out and get them yourself. Now, the reward's not as good, arguably. We'll get intel instead of an actual ornithopter, but like I said, I don't think we're going to be able to get it. This one I'll grab, because that's too far out in deep desert. This one, though, we might be able to just run out and grab it eventually. So we'll leave it there for a bit. Also, who knows? They might grab it before we do. We've just encountered the smugglers. Might be coming up against their borders soon. And what is this? Spice field detected. A new spice field. Oh, nice. Nice. Alright, well, we know where we're going. We're going south. Sir? That's where the town is. Okay, let's go. All right, so yeah, we actually have hit a bit of a bottle bottleneck with Plascrete. I'd like to get more uh, knowledge production up and running. We're about to get agent production doubled. So if we have a look, one minute 41 to go. But when this is done pretty soon, just now, now we just shaved a minute off that. We're down to 40. 
seconds. And we're at double speed, so it's going a little bit quicker. Now, we'll also have symbols on the right-hand side here to let us know if anything's idle. And look at this. What have we got? A raider. They might be heading towards our settlement. So your service, sir. Let's just let's move another go. unit down there. We are ready. Yes, There's this sir. one over here. What do we have here? Sharas. This is, see, going north might be a good idea to just use the passive, peaceful annexation kind of stuff. Now, construction complete. We just got our Plascrete up and running. We're now making plus 26. That's a lot better. We've been offered a trade requests. Let's get to business. From the smugglers. House of Trade. So we'll offer them, we'll be giving them 56. Um, I always forget the name of that resource. What's it called? Influence. Influence. 56 influence in exchange for 113 help. gold. Gonna say no. I like influence. Don't necessarily need the gold. So, no for now. Although it would have built relations, so it can be sometimes, you know, maybe you just want to go for a deal even if it's not the best. This is such a weird piece of terrain, the way we have to go around to get down here like that. And it says, raid detected. Yes, we've detected the raid. They're going to be heading this way, so yes, we'll just sir. stand here. Listening. Want to be on bedrock? Don't want to be fighting out in the dunes? Get attract sandworms. We are focused. As you come, in. come at me, bro. <laughs> Alright, that should be fine. It's only one unit. It's totally fine. Yes. Oh my god, our town is actually able to help. That is such a good defensive spot then, actually. <laughs> there we go. Hey, got an achievement. Defender. On duty. We are on the move. Alright, nice. We'll just come back. We'll heal up. We'll be fine. Anything else? I feel like I'm probably forgetting to do different things. So how's our... We have another agent. Ah, So we have recruiter. So 5% to agent recruitment sp speed. That's just a global thing that happens. And then charismatic. Influence global production is increased per infiltration level. So I'm going to put them on Arrakis again. Because like I said, I want to get more authority back. We're already up to level 1. So being at level 1 means that now... Um, our agent is providing you know 1% to our Solari... Ben um, global resource and then we also get one percent sorry global production of influence is increased by one percent with him as well one percent is really really small but hey i'll take it you know we're getting like what is one percent of plus three <laughs> you know very 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 small but there it is um but either way the most the big benefit is getting two authority from these guys so that's that's more important agents are providing two authority we're up to 52 so we want to go here next. We have two units down here waiting. I think they probably have the supply just to run out that far and take this town. So let's get moving. On duty. Can we see the garrison? Actually, we can see that it's two militia units. Yes, sir. We'll send out all three then towards there just to help take it even faster. Imperial tax has been paid. Easy. So we still have loads in our stockpile. The next payment's going to be 189. Point of interest investigated. We can resolve this now to get get that intel. Intel will feed into here. So intel is used then for missions. Oh, they changed the UI here just slightly. Seems to be the same thing though, yeah. Um, so basically we can do a probe setup, poison the reserves, or gear sabotage. Now this could be really helpful, so I'm going to spend the intel. So we have one Arrakis infiltration level, right? We're plus one, that level one. That symbol matches that symbol. So we can use gear sabotage, pay 100 intel. And that's going to, it's an easy thing. So it's a 0% chance of complications, 30% chance of being detected by an enemy faction when we use it, uh, and 0% chance of agent capture when it's detected. So it's really low risk. It's not that big of a deal. So that's just going to passively kind of complete. And when it's done, we can then use it as an operation to weaken enemies when we go towards them. So it says reduces enemy units power in the region. It doesn't actually say by how much, but I guess we could check that in future. So their power is 12. If we were to activate that when it's done, maybe it goes down to like 10 or something. Yes. It's going to move these guys off the sand. I'm a bit worried about that. Speaking of being worried, sandworm detected. So we can see the tremors on the ground. We're going to have to get moving. Just push in behind them. Once we're on the bedrock, it's safe. You know, it's going to be safe enough. Another one here. Let's recall it. Just get it picked up before it gets taken out. Got to be keeping an eye on these notifications. And if there's no multiplayer in the game yet, but I can imagine with multiplayer, you know, I can't just be pausing it all the time. Maybe um, if I do another series and people want, I could play without ever pausing. Because this one's a bit more. I'm pausing it to kind of explain things as well, you know. All right, take control. That's no problem. Sandworm's still there. 
This harvester is inactive, but I'm not sending it back out there yet. And our council, right, so the Landsrad Council. God, there's so much to cover in the game. So we have, forget what's on top, but basically every 20 days we have the Landsrad Council convening, and then we spent, we can allocate votes to these different things. So this is what, it's just letting us know that in four days you're going to be able to vote on these things. So the first one is controlled markets, where an elected faction, so one faction is going to be chosen to get this benefit. 30% bonus chome spice exchange rate. So our chome rate is going to get increased by 30% depending on whoever gets elected to that. Gear regulations, this is a global one, so it's not an elected faction, that'll affect everyone. 30% negative to unit power, and then a plus 30% authority to the elected faction. I want that one. I want imperial propaganda. I don't necessarily care about those two, they can go whatever. So I'm going to spend my 100 votes on this when we get the opportunity, and I could also then spend influence, which acts as votes as well. I could spend 130 influence, and it then you know there would be 230 votes with my name on it. Uh, for imperial propaganda we could be outvoted by the other houses uh, or by the Harko maybe by the harkonnens depending on how much influence they have and we could check that if we ever wanted to know how much influence do they have oh it actually tells us 113 there i thought we hadn't uncovered it yet i thought we had to build up our infiltration level but i guess not we could see their units and their counselors and how much territory they have if we uh assign agents to them but for now i think it's fine we know what their influence rate is so i know that i've got more influence than them and then I've got more regular votes than them. So I can win that vote if I put everything down on it, right? It's a guarantee, pretty much. Uh, unless, I suppose, the other houses, the minor houses, for whatever reason, not really too sure how they decide what they vote on, or even if they do that often. But I guess if the minor houses were to vote and get the backing of Harkonnen, we could be outvoted. But we'll see how it goes. Our hegemony is doing really well. We're at 1,100. The others are catching up, though. Good to see that they're actually doing stuff. Just got an achievement as well called Sly. Hmm. On duty. I don't want to um, open that up and check them now, but I'll check them after. Sandworm detected. Yeah, so is that gone yet? It seems like it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Out you go. Get back on it. Now, we could put a crew on them. I don't necessarily want to do that right away. We're about to get control of this. We could now push to Tuor to try and get control of this place. How much is that going to be? A hundred authorities. That's a long... That's a lot of authority we have to build up. I think we'll probably just go over here next. At your service, sir. Let's just send some units back to various territory just so they're not yes, super all understood. placed on one area. Alright, so we've got the Plaskrete to get building again. Um, we've just taken this place. Is there anything unique out here? Not really. Um, so I'll build Plaskrete production yet again. And then as we build that up we can start maybe getting more tech and stuff like that. We have our gear sabotage operation complete. No problems there. Feeling good, man. Love it when the music comes on. Hurricane grows close enough and we'll be uh, soon enough we'll be able to get the um, town unlocked for hegemony. How's our Waiting ornithopters doing? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I'm curious actually what's out in this region. So let's go check that one. Ah, we've got an event. Representatives from IX X, are visiting Arrakis. Arrakis. They're interested in scientific collaboration. So if we research two new developments, we'll gain a thousand Solari. Or if we find and resolve two crashed ornithopters, we'll get an experimental ornithopter at our main base. Hmm. I don't actually know what an experimental ornithopter is. We need to have less than five. Now I think I'd rather just get the thousand gold. But I don't know what an experimental ornithopter does. It's a bit of a shame it doesn't tell me. Um, so we could uh, we could try both anyway. Just to cover our bases. And there's going to be a time limit on that. So what is it? 19 days. Okay. So we know from this screen we've got an ornithopter crash there. Might as well just actually have that being worked on passively. It doesn't cost us anything. We should totally do that. Unless we plan on picking them up, I suppose. Um, and then there's another anomaly here. A harvester wreck. Right, so there's a wreck in the sand of an old harvester. We can just send an ornithopter straight out to it and grab spice, or we'll gain extra knowledge. Advances a random accessible development by two days. That's pretty good, actually. So yeah, I think we'll just do that one after the one we're doing now. Alright, cool. Awaiting orders. Ashmon. So it's going to be 58 authority. We've got 33. By the time we take it, we might have... 
what we need. So let's just let's just move out towards it now. We'll go with everyone again. Make it a bit quicker. Just trying to think. Do I have any resource that we could maybe trade? You know, no, I don't think so. So here's our little timer bar for when the votes are going to start. Uh, so it's just in a matter of seconds, really. Our exchange rate is worse than it was before, actually. Again, don't know if I need the money. Really? Maybe I'll just top that up a little bit. Keep stockpiling our spice till we get desperate. Again, if we're going to get that thousand gold from the event, um, if we manage to do it, which I'm sure we will, especially if we combine these things, right? So, research two new developments. We're going to get one done easily. We'll probably get the other one done easily anyway. But if we advance technology then with this thing, definitely get it done. So the fact that I don't actually need money, let's just stockpile all the spice then. We're currently producing 20. Um, I think I'll do it. Let's assign a crew to this. So add a crew to the harvester for 50 manpower, and it'll go from 20 to 25. There we go. A little bit of extra spice. Now, the Landsrad Council vote is active, so the voting is going to last five more days, and then the effect is going to last for the next 20. So like I said, I want to go all in on Imperial Propaganda. I'm spending everything. So my 100 votes plus the 140 uh, extra influence I have. I don't necessarily care too much about the exchange rate changing or the, you know, the damage in power and stuff like that. That's not really going to affect me too much. I want to go all in on this. This is my biggest limiting factor. Um, also, I suppose water is as well to an extent. So we've got Wind Strength 4 down here. Let's get some water extraction going. The hell was that? What was that? <laughs> Alright, nice. So, 58. We're going to have to just wait here until we build that up. Let's just move our units back out. So, you can just sit here and wait. It's not going to go anywhere as long as you keep a unit in that zone of control. That area of influence. What do we have here as well? A crashed shuttle. Again, researching this could give us more military uh, military development did this one was this specific economic development all right uh, or we could just get Solari straight up by sending an ornithopter there instead again I think I'll go with the tech play the long game uh, see so yeah, that council votes not going to change until this goes up so we're still earning influence we could assign more to it as we earn more over time ongoing siege and then the unassigned agent so we have an agent not doing anything just pause time. Kind of tempting to go on a counterintelligence. Or we could go with extra manpower, extra Solari and intel, or extra influence and intel. I think I'll go with that. So we have Nayeli. Agent produces 20%, so she's intendant. 20% more of every resource but infiltration. A Sook Doctor. Knowledge global production is increased by 1% per infiltration level. So what I'm going to do is, I don't really consider the infiltration level of this to be that big of a deal. I'll put you on Landsrad instead, and I'll put you on Arrakis because knowledge based on um, the levels that we build I think it's probably a bit more important long term it's just improving your tech rate even if only a slight bit uh, this is already up to level one this will gain to level one now so we're gonna get extra influence and extra Intel per uh, just as I don't know it's not per day I guess kind of per day right good uh, so, we just finished the point of interest out here. We can resolve this. Boom. That's going to give us extra intel. We're up to 210 now. And we can see that's 1 out of 2 now. So, if we, did, if we found another crashed ornithopter, we could get that done. But instead, we're going to go with this one. Two minutes in order to get the economic development from the harvester wreck. Oh, there's another crashed ornithopter right there. But again, I want to take the 1,000 gold. It seems like it would be better. All right, so our water is getting done there. We need, fi we're actually, our limiting factor to expanding is actually water right now, not authority. We have the authority. Um, so we want to train militia so that we can also defend our place. So we can get three militia right now in various towns. So yeah, I'm just going to put one here. Just, I can't move actually when we selected that. Strange, didn't have that before. Don't need one out there and then one here. So that's 10 manpower and 100 gold that we've just spent. It's going to be, I think, a little bit of upkeep as well, I think. But it'll just mean that if we get attacked by two units now, 
you know, we'll have two units to defend, so it should be fine. Now, militia are pretty weak, but at least it's something. It buys us time as well for our other units to get over there. All right, so our water is set up. We have now 10 water uh, overflow, if you will. What else could we be doing? Keeping an eye on the harvester. Got good plastic root production. So a little tip as well, if you zoom out and you press I, you can actually see all the free building slots uh, that you have on your various towns. And you can actually hide things. If there's too much clutter on the screen, just get rid of everything you don't want. And now I can just see towns and how many building slots they have, and then the regions sort of um, modifiers, right? The wind strength, the resources, etc. So nice little tip. I only found that out not that long ago. So let me just have a quick look. So what could we be getting here? Again, we could go with something like research, uh, research right? There's, these are, there's no specific resources in these towns, so it'd be good to place stuff like manpower production, knowledge production, influence, intel, you know, airfields to get around, defenses, fuel. These kind of things would be good. Fuel is actually a good one, I think, although we could modify it in the fuel town out here, actually. It might be a better idea. Yeah, so let's go with fuel. That fuel production is then, instead of normally six, we're going to get nine, and that's going to allow us to get another harvester and get set up on this spice field eventually, right? So that's good. Uh, we still got more plasticrete, so let's just keep building. Uh, again, water. A lot more water out here will be nice. Pays off for the future. It's not necessarily immediate concern, I guess. And then out here, maybe I'll go with knowledge. So this one would be good to get a processing plant. It'll give us 30 solari, but we need a specific technology for it. Oh, we just got the technology, huh? Pretty good timing, actually. I could have actually built it if I didn't spend the resources a second. Oh, no, I can build it now. <laughs> Sweet. All right, good. All part of the plan. Let's just build it next to his resource to make it thematic. All right, cool. Good. So we're building now in Runmur, Tsimma, and Ajmon. And we also have our garrison being built up so we've got one militia in each of those towns feeling good we just need more authority a little bit more water we can come out here and grab two ore we've still got 11 days left on this we're searching another development oh yeah sorry uh you don't lose tech by the way i think it just saves it for you so we've gotten our intelligence network spying logistics i'd like to maybe get countermeasures is pretty expensive so the ones that have little icons next to them are unique technologies for me atreides merchants Five Solari production per other faction with a relationship over 80. Or over, or with sieges over 80 as well. But we don't have any sieges and we definitely don't have any relations that are that good. Authority cost on annexing villages is reduced. That's pretty good, right? Make it cheaper to go, go out and get new stuff. Knowledge per controlled village, 0.2. Resource production in villages with exactly one building is increased and we unlock the administrative hall. Just trying to think, do we want to go with military... Dude, we're being fairly balanced, but I think I'll go a bit more on the intelligence side and espionage side. <clears throat> All right. So, by the way, I didn't mention it, but the... Did this get passed yet? It did, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So this got passed, actually, a little while ago. Um, so we've had the effect up here in the top left. Imperial propaganda. 30% authority production. So that's good. So we won the vote. We had 274 of the vote. The Fremen had 118. House Harkonnen put down 96. So they actually put down their votes, but they didn't get it. So that feels good. You know, they didn't put it down on other things. Um, Harkonnen did spread their votes on that one. They actually supported lowering military power for everybody, which is a bit weird, including themselves. I don't know why you'd ever do that. <laughs> Unless you were just, you felt, yeah, I don't know. If it's going to affect everyone, I don't, I don't really get the, even the point of it. Unless maybe you're affecting everyone else. I don't know. Anyway. Let me know if you think you know more about that, but it seems strange if everyone's power is... I guess with armor, if you feel like you've got particularly armored units and only power is decreasing, you probably have the advantage. Um, that might make sense. All right, cool. Let's keep time playing. Ferrying back and forth, grabbing that spice. Our spice stockpile is out of its mind right now, which is great. Now, how much do we need to get this town? We need 110. But of course, we saw as well that, we can resolve this, we saw as well that we're about to get a technology that's going to reduce it by 15%, so it should be about 85-ish, something like that, 90 maybe. So there's 10 days remaining on the X scientist, there is 
seven days remaining on the next tech. So we're going to definitely do that. So it's no problem. And it said it would advance a random tech by two days. So the Atreides Merchants has already been advanced a little bit. So that's nice. All right. Investigate this crash again or just grab the money. Yeah, let's investigate the crash. We're about to get our next agent as well. Feels good. We're losing money though. But we're going to get money when this building gets done. Got another achievement. So we just got a building done. That's going to be the fuel cell factory exploiting the energy resources here. And the energy sources here. So fuel is up to 11. Room for another harvester. Yes, sir. Haven't encountered the other factions yet. You know, we saw a little bit of the uh, smugglers, but that's really about it. Our ornithopters are out this way. Man, ornithopters are so cool. <laughs> I never really even... I think I'd heard of them before and seen the concept before. But on seeing the, the film, um, the recent Dune film in cinemas, they were so awesome in that film. <laughs> when they, like, kill the engines and they just dive. It's so cool. I wish I... You know, wish we see them in more creative machines like that, I guess, in more media. would be nice. I'm um, just trying to think, am I forgetting to do anything? How much plastic do we have? An okay amount. Not really forgetting to do anything. want to push out and take two ore pretty soon. It's gone a bit dark on us. Maybe we should um, send an ore... Although they're a bit busy. I'm sure it's fine. Just don't want anyone else getting to it. But it's so close to us. I, I don't think another faction would have started here. I think the way the map basically works is that everyone starts off on the edges. And it is a random map. But everyone kind of starts off on the edges. The polar sink is in the center. Whoever controls that gets a big benefit. Um, and yeah, on a medium map size, I guess everyone's has everyone gets at least one spice field in front of them. But maybe this one is kind of equal distant between the other faction. I don't know. At least we're handling the economy fine. Our landsrad standing is fine. This was something I actually struggled a little bit with, with the landsrad standing, was I didn't really fully understand how to influence it. Um, I know that by paying your taxes and... I guess that's kind of it. That's how you gain it, but I never really fully... I don't know the exact way you earn it. Like, if I want to increase this to 300 right now, what do I do? You know, I couldn't tell you, but I could tell you for every other resource what to do. Uh, anyway, a raid has been detected. We have two units coming into Mimtar. Let's bring another one up. Let's go. Help the defense. Bring everyone up. Screw it. We have one garrison unit here as well, of course. A militia unit. They're just bringing in two units. So our defenses are deployed. Village under siege, combat ongoing, unassigned agent. So we have another agent. She's charismatic and a psychologist. So extra influence again. And this agent produces 20% more intel as a psychologist. 20% more intel. Hmm. Well, let's put her down on the Landsrad. Chome would give us Solari. I guess my Solari is a little bit low. Yeah, sure. Let's go with Chome. And then we'll build that up to infiltration level one as well. It's a little overkill actually sending everyone out here. I'm just going to send one of these units back. Yes. Alright, good. We've got a sandworm detected. Staying on top of it. Feeling good. Get him out of here. Trade request. Uh, so, Vladimir Harkonnen. What do I want? You're the one who came to me, bro. Uh, so, he wants some of my influence for a trade agreement. So, 15% salary for both of us at the expense of one authority production. You're going to have to say no. It's actually a tempting offer. I would take that a little later on, but authority is just too important for me right now. Especially while we have the uh, benefit. Oh, shit. Another sandworm. I can't actually... You can't actually control your garrison directly, so they might just get eaten up. It's a little annoying, actually. I think you can tell them to fall back now. <laughs> I don't know how they're staying alive. They're on one health. Whoop. 
That was weird. It might have been bugged or something. It didn't seem to be working correctly. We lost our unit there. Our harvester is inactive. Let's send it back out. Point of interest investigated. Let's resolve that to get a military... So survival training is just gained two days, which is good. We're about to get local dialect as well. All right, pretty basic little raid there. New spice field detected. We found another one, and we have a sandstorm kicking off. Or apparently not. It might be in the fog of war, maybe. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> not close to me, anyway. Let's go with survival training. So unlocks the military base building, increases army's max supply by 50%, and unlocks the heavy weapon squad unit. Okay. Uh, so we've just gotten this done, the 1x scientist, so we can confirm that we want to go with asking for research funding now that we've done two developments, gaining a thousand Solari with two days left on that event. So nailed it. We are ready. Uh, these guys are fine. Let's get that garrison unit back. Who knows, we might be attacked again. And we nearly have enough now to go take two ore, but we need three yes, units. Sir. So I'm going to bring these guys back out. We're going to gather all three, head south. A little dangerous. A bit of a further trek here. In terms of being attacked by sandworms and the like. Uh, so, does anyone not have have an empty building slot? Uh, Mimtar does. Maybe more manpower production, or we can start getting knowledge. Or even more water, I guess. Actually, water is good because we can trade it with a siege. That sandstorm is getting a little close. Alright, I just realized how far into this episode we are. I'm just going to pause it there. We'll save it there. That's going to be our first episode. We've just pretty much paid our spice tax twice. And uh, that's going to be it for this one. So in the next episode, the plan is to just keep expanding, obviously. Building out our territories, keeping our economy stable, focusing a little bit more on espionage. Things are going well so far. We are winning by 100 hegemony, anyway. Uh, we're paying our uh, spice tax and stockpiling quite a lot, so everything look is looking good. But we haven't really encountered the other factions yet, which is a bit weird. I thought we'd definitely see them by now. We're only on the medium map size, so a bit strange. Haven't lost anything to sandworms yet, and... Uh, We've defended all our raids, so feeling pretty damn good. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.